Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be installing Kali Linux on Hyper-V in a Windows 10 PC. Before we begin, let's take a look at the minimum requirements to get this installed. The first thing is RAM, and for RAM, you're going to need at least 2 gigs of RAM. It runs fine on one, but two is recommended. For hard disk space, you're going to want at least 10 gigs available space. You're going to need the Kali Linux ISO image file, and I'll show you where to download that. And you're also going to want to have the Hyper-V enabled on Windows 10. Now, if you don't know how to do that, you can check out this video and I'll walk you through the steps. If you find this video useful, please like and consider subscribing. I'm trying to reach as many users as I possibly can. So let's get to this installation. Here we are at the Windows 10 desktop and I've just enabled Hyper-V. The next thing that we need to do is download a copy of Kali Linux. So I have the official website here, which is kali.org. And I'm going to go into the download section and we want to use a bare metal download and we'll scroll down a bit here. So we're going to download the 64 bit version and we can download the ISO file from here and it'll start downloading. It's about three gigs in size, a little bit over that. We'll let this download and we'll skip over to the next part. Okay, the download is now complete. We're ready to roll. So we can just go into our file explorer. Just want to locate it. Here it is in my downloads folder. Uh, we're just going to need to know the path when we're going to be uh, locating it later. So I'm just going to minimize that for now and I'm going to close out of my browser. And now that I have Hyper-V installed and activated, I'm just going to, in my search bar, I'm just going to type in Hyper-V and we got the manager right over here. So to begin, we want to click on our workstation right over here. And then on the right hand side, we're going to click on new and then we'll select a virtual machine. The first page, we'll just leave it as default and click on next. Now we have to specify a name for this one. I'm just gonna call it Kali. And if you wanna store your virtual machine somewhere else, if you run into space issues, you can check this and then browse to another folder on your desktop. We'll click on next. So we'll leave it as generation one and then click on next. And what we wanna do is you're gonna have at least two gigs of storage space available. So I'll just put in two gigs here and we're gonna uncheck this use dynamic memory option and then click on next. For the connection, it's not connected right now. We can just use it as a default switch and then click on next. So under create virtual hard disk, we're just gonna decrease the size over here and I'll put in 12 gigs. Uh, that should be more than enough for this operating system. And then we'll click on next. And now what we wanna do is select the ISO image file. We're gonna install the operating system from a bootable CD or DVD-ROM. So all we have to do is just point to the ISO file that we just downloaded. So it's over here in my downloads folder. So I'm just gonna click on that and then click on open. Then we can click on next. And then we get a summary of everything that we've just done here. If you do need to go back, you can always change the preferences later. Uh, but once you have all this confirmed, we can click on finish. Now that we have it all set up, we're ready to start the virtual machine. So we can just right click on the Kali over here in the menu and then select connect and it's going to start booting up the virtual machine. So we'll just click on the start button here and we'll let it get started. Uh, I'm just going to maximize the size of this window so you can see it properly. In the menu, I'll be selecting graphical install and then hit enter on my keyboard. So now we can select the language. I'm going to be leaving pretty much everything as default. If you do want to specify your language, you can go ahead to the list and change it there. So I'll leave it as English and then click on continue. I'll set the location as United States. Click on continue. American English is fine. I'll click on continue. To configure the network, we're going to be leaving the host name as default. It says Kali there and that's fine. We'll click on continue and the domain name. We don't need to have anything in here. So we'll just click on continue. And now we're going to be setting up our username. So I'll go ahead and just type one in right now. And that will be the user for the account. So we'll also hit on enter or click continue. And we can go ahead and type in a password now. Once complete, click on continue. Uh, then you can select your time zone. I'm going to leave it as Eastern and I'll click on continue. And we'll be using guided, use the entire disk and then click on continue and selecting the only partition available, which is our virtual disk. We'll select that and click continue and we'll leave all files in one partition and then click on continue and we're ready to finish. And so we can click on continue. It's going to write the changes now and it's asking to confirm these changes. So we'll select yes and then continue. And now it's going to install the operating system in the virtual space. Now we have the option to select a desktop environment. I'm not going to be changing anything and be leaving everything as is and then clicking on continue. So now it's asking if you want to install the bootloader to a primary drive, we're going to leave the default as yes, and then click on continue. And now we need to select our virtual drive as a drive that we're selecting to install on and then click on continue. And now we're at the last step. The installation is now complete. It needs to restart. And so we're just going to click on continue. We're going to allow the system to reboot and we'll get back to the login screen. So it successfully restarted and now we're at the login screen. Now we just have to type in the username and password that we had created during the installation. And this is the desktop of Kali Linux. We've completed the installation of Kali Linux inside Hyper-V on a Windows 10 PC. 
We have all the preloaded network security software already built in. You can go ahead and add more if you'd like, but they have quite a few options right here if you're looking for exploitation or network analysis. So that is how you install Kali Linux inside Hyper-V on a Windows 10 PC. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more installations like this. I have a lot more content coming out. If you have any questions, you can go ahead and put them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Thank <laughs> you.